I'm going to show you how to use an aluminum force to get the most detail out of some of your deeper impression dies. I'll be using a manual press, though an electric press will also work and is a little bit faster. Choose an aluminum plug that is more than large enough to fill the impression in the impression die. Make sure you have a tool steel pusher in place on your upper platen. To set yourself up for success, raise the lower platen until there's just a tiny bit of space between the aluminum plug and the tool steel pusher so that you can easily start pressing once the aluminum is hot. Use a torch to heat the aluminum on your soldering station, then place the puck into the impression die and begin pumping immediately to flatten it as much as possible. On a manual press, I'm taking it to about 6,000 PSI every time. On an electric, it would be between 1,500 and 1,800 PSI. Your aluminum definitely needs to be hot for this, so if you can, move an annealing station with a torch near your press. Let's take a look at the force after a single pressing. You can see we didn't capture all the detail, but we will just anneal it and press it again. If you wanted to be more efficient, you could grind down these flat areas alongside the edges of the leaf, and that would allow the aluminum to press down more easily into the impression die. You can apply oil to the impression die to make it easier for you to remove the force once it's pressed. Any kind of oil will work, you just want it to be a light coating. Heat the aluminum plug again and use tweezers to place the force back into the impression die in the correct orientation. When making these forces, you really want the aluminum to stay hot while you press it. It really just won't move very much if you try and press it while it's cold. If your torch isn't near your press, be sure to carefully walk the heated aluminum plug from your annealing station over to the die rather than putting the force into the die to transport it because that will be a huge heat sink. You want to get the hot aluminum into the die and pressed as quickly as possible while also being safe. On these really deep impression dies, the force does like to get stuck. So to remove it, rest it against the base of your press, hold a chisel flat along the surface, and then tap the end of the chisel with a mallet. You do want to be careful that you don't gouge the die itself, so keep the chisel parallel to the top surface of the die. We still need to get a little bit more detail, so let's anneal it again. This is real-time heating of the aluminum force using an acetylene air torch. Aluminum does not anneal the same way as non-ferrous metals. You do not want it to glow. There's very subtle change in color and surface finish. It gets a little more gray and a little more matte, but it's hard to see. The best thing will be to experiment with your torch and your system. And if the aluminum does not press easily in the press, then you'll need to heat it a little bit longer. It's all about experimenting and trying things to see what works best for you. Use tweezers or tongs to bring your heated aluminum force back over to your impression die and register it in place. Do not touch it with your fingers. You're going to pump the handle and raise the lower platen again. We're going to try and smash this aluminum into the impression die um, as quickly as possible and get that force to pick up more of the detail. Throughout this whole process, you want to work quickly, but safely. It's worth practicing a few times using non-heated metal so that you get comfortable with the motions and the actions that you'll need to take to safely put the heated aluminum plug into the impression die. All right, we picked up more detail, but I want to hit it again one more time. So I have heated the aluminum up yet again, and I am pressing it to hopefully pick up all of the detail in those leaves. I'm checking it to make sure that the aluminum is not still hot and then I will pop it out of the impression die as I showed you earlier. And that looks like we've picked up all the detail. 
So now I will show you how to use this force to form your metal into the impression die. The first thing you want to do is to use urethane to form annealed metal into the die itself. You're not looking to capture all the detail, you just want a shadow image and marks left on the copper so that you can re-register it in the die in the correct orientation. This will also allow you to put the force into the die correctly. Annealing will be your friend during this process. So anneal, press, anneal, press, that's going to be on repeat when you're using the force to form your metal. I'm using about 14 gauge copper. This can also work with thinner gauge metal, but you do have to be careful not to split the metal at the top edges. To use the force, we are putting our slightly formed metal back into the impression die and then resting the aluminum force on top of the copper and we are pressing the force into the copper. You can see the metal start to be displaced. It's being forced down into that impression die. And just as you remove the force from the impression die, you'll do the same process to remove the copper. Work slowly, make sure you're wearing eye protection, and get that metal out of the impression die without marring the surface of the die itself. I find it's helpful to lightly tap the chisel under the corners of the metal along the side and just ease it out of the die. Let's take a look. We've picked up some detail, but not all. So we are going to anneal it again, and we're going to trim the copper around the impression. You do want to make sure that you're still leaving a lip, but by removing that excess metal, it will help the copper flow down into the die more easily. Place the force back onto the annealed metal and press again. After you've made the force and you're using it to form the copper, you do not need to heat the aluminum. The force is being used as a pusher to help push the metal into the die. And here is the final result. This is the force. You can see it has all the details still. And here's the finished copper piece. It's picked up all of the detail. And the force is now reusable. You can use this for making any further impressions of the same design. If the force ever loses any detail, just press it again into the die and it'll tighten right up.